If you would have told me 10 years ago that one day I would be talking to a video camera in my basement about things like how I personally shave my testicles and this is what I was going to consider successful, I would have punched you in the face. Because 10 years ago, the only thing that was going to mean success for this guy was running a chain of super successful fitness centers. But I am an entrepreneur, and the one thing that I've learned over the years is that success doesn't always look like what you expect it will. Five-year plans haven't worked out for me, and so I stopped making them, but I have learned some incredibly valuable entrepreneurial and business lessons along the way. And so today, I thought I'd share 10 of them. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. Welcome to the second season of HustlersKungFu.com. The Art of Making Online Income. I decided to do this show because I made a video not too long ago, last year. No eBay, no Amazon, and people lost their minds. People were freaking out. They were like, yo, Glendon, what can you do? I mean, okay, I can't do Amazon. I can't do eBay. What can I do? And I was like, thought it was pretty simple. Start a website. It's not simple. People have been bugging ever since. So at uh, hustlerskungfu.com, we're about solutions. So I created a show. I brought on a few people for the first season. Now we're in the second season, The Art of Online Income. And the first guest is Aaron Marino, who I found out through con you know, during the show is a local dude, and we'll probably do some stuff together in the future. But he brings it. He brings it. He's very, he's very open. He's extremely open. Some stuff came out I didn't expect, and I know this. You're going to enjoy it because he's a genuine and authentic person, and you'll see some things from him that will help you with your business and understand that you can make money without eBay or Amazon, and he gives numbers, real numbers, and it'll blow your mind. So with that, we're going to jump into it. But, whoa, the show is brought to you by Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills at HustlersKungFu.com, where if you want to learn how to make money, if you want to learn how to handle some personal issues, get your credit straight, learn how to sell, or start a business in 30 days, this is the place for you. So with that done, let's talk to Aaron. You're really going to enjoy it. Five years of YouTube, you know, here I am, client, and then all of a sudden, in the last, like, literally, it's been, you know, 12 months. It's just, you've seen this monster spike. And I really think that it's because YouTube is starting to change the way that it recommends people. And um, it's really, you know, YouTube's getting better in terms of, you know, identifying where your audience is and then getting your videos in front of them based on their viewing habits and, and what, they, what they're watching online. And so... That, that is really cool because the reason that I brought you on was for that video, 10 business lessons I learned. And when you said that the janitor was making more, I was like, I got to get this guy on the show. <laughs> I got to get this guy on the show because he really has gone through it because honestly, I think your success is predicated because you were able to do business in the real world before you got on YouTube. Uh, many of these kids, I'm not trying to marginalize nope, them. I understand. But they just lucked into it. That's it. It's I, I joke with people. I say, you know, I went to VidCon last, not this year, but the year before. Um, and what was really frustrating to me was hearing all these people try and explain YouTube success. <laughs> it's like, okay, I got an analogy. Everybody's got a handful of crap and everybody throws it at once at a wall. And some people's crap sticks and other people it doesn't. And, you know, yes, there are some things that you can do that are going to help that, that basically successful YouTubers do consistently that right, right. you can model yourself after. But honestly, you know, it is, there is so much luck that is in, that is involved in, in getting a following and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. It really is incredible. But yeah, the young, the young kids, some of them, man, you know, YouTube is going to be responsible for making more millionaires under the age of 16 than anything else in the history of Mankind. history. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's fantastic for some, but it's sort of scary when you think about it. It's like what I was doing when I was 16, 
You know, I was working at a, you know, a gas station. I was working at a, a snack bar at a pool. I was doing manual labor to make $5 an hour. And you've got these kids that are making, you know, 40 times more than their parents. <laughs> it's, like, ooh. it's like, no, you can't do that. Be like, I, there, it's like, how many 12 year olds are holding the, pulling the purse strings, man. It's crazy. I was showing a friend of, of, cause I follow the beauty bloggers because mm -hmm. they're pushing the envelope because it was just, you know, it used to be pretty girls, but now a lot of them are really, really investing in their craft. They're doing more things with cameras. And there was this one girl, I showed it to my friend cause he couldn't believe it. Cause he just like, I don't understand. She was still in high school and she just came on YouTube and said, Oh, and my parents give me money for nothing. I bought my own car. I did this. I bought my prom dress. I did all of that. And then there was a picture of her and the guy that was, you know, going to the prom because, you know, he's one of those things that he, how old are you, by the way, before I'm I get, 39, 30. Oh, you, you understand. You understand, understand. the world has changed. The yes. world has changed. <laughs> the world has changed a lot. And many people just don't want to accept that. But I was explaining to him that a lot of these kids just simply do not care about racism cult they just don't if you're cool you're cool but yep. for folks who are like late 30s 40s they're like i'll be 49 this year mm -hmm. and they're just like mm -mm, no 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 and this girl who is stunning okay yeah. she's stunning she takes this black guy to her prom and she's probably i looked at her on social um social blade she's probably doing about five grand a month wow yeah in high school <laughs> in high school so that's crazy this just shows you what happens when someone has the economic ability to, I mean, she doesn't, you know, like if she, if her parents didn't like her choices, she makes enough money. She can move out. Yep. Not the scary thing, because can you imagine you're 16 years old, you know, your father makes 50,000, but you make 150. Yeah, that's what I'm he's, saying. <laughs> he, he's he's gonna trying discipline to you. <laughs> what he's gonna take your keys? Wait a second! I bought your car. How about you give me your keys? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just, you know what, Dad? I respect that, but I'm out of here. I mean, it's exactly. just, it, it, it is kind of scary. It is kind of scary, but it's also kind of wonderful because I think that we are just in the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is just the beginning because I'm looking at, you know, what we we're discussing earlier. I would probably hit maybe 15, possibly 20,000 new subscribers this year, which would be, it took me from 2009 to 2014 to get 20,000 subscribers. Yeah. And now I'm at the point where this could happen and jump in years. Cause I, I've watched a lot of YouTube channels and I've seen it happen. It's just all of a sudden you're looking at, I got 76,000 uh, subscribers. Then like four months later, they had 150. And it's like, how did that happen? Yeah. It scales and, and YouTube, as you grow, it makes you sort of like, it makes you put in the legwork first. And then all of a sudden, you know, once it sees that people are subscribing and you're putting and you're uploading content regularly, then all of a sudden you'll see your, your numbers just start to skyrocket. It's, um, it's, it's really fascinating. Oh, it, it has been tripping me out because I've got a whole new crowd and I've switched up my message. Unlike you, your message has been the same since pretty much day one. Grooming, being a gentleman. Now, how did you just decide to go on YouTube and come out of the, the gym management business? <laughs> it was uh it was a it was a interesting transition. I um I I was I owned a I owned a small fitness center and it was I was miserable. I was I was not making any money. I was in debt. It was horrible. And so I decided to start an image consulting business. Something happened, interestingly enough, one of my gym clients came up to me and wanted to know what to wear for a date. And so I'd always been interested in clothing and grooming and, and style. And I'm very comfortable talking about pretty much anything because I was raised by a mother or by a woman. And uh, so, you know, she forced me to talk. And so I'm very comfortable talking about everything and anything. And so uh, I started a, uh, an image consulting firm and helped men, you know, with style and grooming. And one Christmas, my wife gave me a video camera and I'm an only child with a big mouth and a video camera. So it was only natural that I was going to start talking okay. about it, put it on YouTube. Now the gym, 
I was uh, you're in Marietta, mm -hmm. which I didn't know, which I think is pretty cool. You remember coffees, Jim? I do. You can Franklin sit on the Road. floor. Yeah. I, I used to work out there. I used to live on Franklin Road before it became the hood yep. <laughs> a long time ago. Yep. <laughs> and it, it was just really interesting because there was a lot of things there. There was coffees. There was the main event on Powers Ferry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the wrestlers would work out. You, you Luger, see, he owned, yep, yep. and Sting, right? I think they owned that one. And okay, I, owned, I saw them in there all the time. I uh, I owned a nutrition store right across the street in the Fuddruckers Shopping Center called Discount Nutrition for a little while. I gave you money. I, I went in that store several times. You didn't. Well, it was you didn't give me much because I wasn't there long. Because um, the this was before I got into the fitness business. The um, my partner and I, he, do you remember something called Blue Nitro? And like, yeah. okay, well, it was it became illegal, and he decided that he could make a lot of money off of it, and so um, he wanted to keep selling it, sort of in the back, you know, hey, come give me fifty dollars cash, I'll give you a bottle of Blue Nitro. And so here I am, and I didn't know much, but I did know that I would not do well in prison. I'd be popular, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't it wouldn't be, do much for. For my uh, creative, uh, you know, my creative growth and personal development, and so I decided that I just needed to get out of it. And so it wasn't long after we opened that store that I kind of took off, and and uh, we parted ways. Interestingly, interestingly enough, I think he actually spent some time in prison. So I made the right decision. Man, I mean, that's um, that's really kind of creepy because that a guy. I used to be in the storage auction business for real before the mm -hmm. television shows and stuff on. And I had a guy approach me and they wanted to launder some drug money through the business. And I said instantly, no. And he <laughs> just like, you know, well, when we make that kind of offer, you know, we can't be, I was like, cool. Hey, fine, fine, fine. You do your thing. He, he, is, he was killed. Mm -hmm. So your path of doing the right thing. Cause I'm like you. I would not do well in prison myself. I just, <laughs> it's not even on the map of things. Like, well, you know, I, it's no, no, no. I cherish my freedom way, way too much. And it's just really funny that when you get on the business path, how many things happen to you that you can't talk to your normal friends about who have regular jobs. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on because when you did that, ten things I learned as an entrepreneur. Uh, my channel is predicated towards people who want to start businesses mm -hmm. and everyone is kind of looking at the first class. They're looking at Google. They're looking at Zuckerberg. When you start a regular business, maybe in your town, your city, and you get to six figures and you manage your money, you can have an amazing life. But everyone's, everyone's looking at this whole, we're going to go become billionaires when most businesses just don't have the scale for that. It's just reality. No, but, and that's one of the interesting things with doing business online and, and cause I've seen, I've seen it full circle. I started, you know, with a nutrition store where I was selling a product. Then I went into the, you know, fitness center business where I was doing personal training and selling memberships and supplements. And then the service business where I was, you know, I was uh, taking guys out, taking them shopping and then to come and see, how money is made online. And a lot of these people, it sort of skews your, your, your value of a dollar to some degree because there's so many people making so much money and you hear about, you know, astronomical successes with, you know, what is perceived to be little effort or little overhead or little, you know, capital that is required in order to start it. But you know, it's the internet is, has definitely skewed my perception of business value of a dollar, if that makes sense. And whenever, and it's hard to explain that. It's hard to explain that to somebody. It's like when you talk, when you and I were talking a minute ago about, you know, there's a 15 year old girl who's going to make half a million dollars for setting up a video camera and talking about boys in her bedroom when she gets home from school. That's the type of money that, you know, that we're talking about and beyond. And so talking to somebody, another business owner, somebody who's starting a business who doesn't understand the internet and how money is made on the internet, it's, it, they don't, they just don't understand. And so it's, uh, it's become a very taboo topic. I don't talk about money much with people anymore, uh, just because it, the percent it, it's, it's different. 
a lot of people are in the business of trading time for money. You've probably heard that before where, you know, if I work X number of hours, I'm going to make X number of dollars. Well, the internet and even owning your own business allows that to change. And that's what's been one of the, one of the most beautiful things and the most liberating and freeing things that I've found in the past, you know, X number of years since I've been doing this. Okay. I'm going to explain it to you. And there's this guy that is named Nev Mihara. And he's got this video on titled, How the Fuck I Make Money. And when I <laughs> saw that, it was like, because you just said the keyword, no one understands because, I mean, I did a lunch last month and this was my most successful lunch in six years. Let's put it this way. I could live off the money I made in one month for the rest of the year. Easy. Yep. And when I had a regular business where I had to grind, struggle, <laughs> uh, deal with code enforcement, deal with crazy people, the trash collector not pick. I mean, you earn so much of your money because so much of your time was invested in the business. And here's the funny thing, because you, you, you say it's a taboo subject. I'm a little bit more malleable because I'm a little crazy with it. But one side of my family thinks I'm a criminal because I don't have a job. <laughs> so when you talk about when you talk about it's a taboo subject, I was like, oh, let me tell him my story because <laughs> that's a great story. Too. I, I grew up in Alabama, a very conservative family. And you know, a real man works in the steel plant, a yeah. real man works in the coal mine. Uh, you're sitting on the internet in your box. Oh, and oh, you you did really well in school and you, you you write books and you wrote poetry. You should be like, you should be a cop. You're so, I mean, exactly. you're dealing with all of this social designation of who you should be based on the way you look. And going back to what you said about um, the internet, it, I can't have a regular job anymore. I've been, well, I've been self-employed since 2000. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this internet thing since 2009. I mean, completely, because I've always sold on eBay and Amazon when I had a storage sure. option. Business. But from 2009 up to now, I've been 100% internet based. And it does, I've had, I mean, I've had, you know, when I've was been extremely poor at one mm -hmm. point in my life, I've been fucking homeless. And I've had days where I've made more money three, four times in days than I did in a month back then. Mm -hmm. And it totally, I, I'm not going to say it spoils me because I'm extremely grateful. Sometimes I sit around on my desk on my scraps and I'll be writing, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, because there's a lot of people struggling. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people catching hell out there. And it's hard to explain this internet thing to someone who's rooted in, I go to a job, I get in my car, I get a check every two weeks. They can't, it's just, it just blow. It's so bad. And one of my online courses, I got a course called becoming the boss because of the mental transition. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do that? And, you know, going to you, what was your transition like when you left the physical business world and got all digital? It's been a, mine has been more of a transition. And so it's been me letting go little by little of some of the old things that I was doing and the, you know, the, the digital area that, that we occupy is fascinating and it, it's amazing. But it's funny because to your point, whenever I go to a party or a gathering with my wife and people always, you know, what is the first thing that a guy asks you when you meet him? What, what do you, you do for do? a living? What do you do well, for so my so I used to say I make videos. My wife's like, you sound like a porn star. <laughs> so, so, so I can't say so she's prevented me from saying I make videos for a living now. Um, but, uh, a funny story was that, um, uh, one day, uh, she needed some help around the house. And so we were interviewing a woman to come and help and, and clean, clean the house occasionally, like once a week or once every two weeks. So she's given her a tour of the house. And in one of the spare bedrooms, <laughs> there's a tripod and my camera set up and the woman didn't speak English a hundred percent fluently. And so she didn't understand what YouTube was when my wife was trying to explain why there was a camera. She didn't know it was in there. So she walks in and she's like, uh, every, they both looked at the camera, looking at the bed and like, uh, and she's like, no, 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 YouTube, my husband videos. And she's like, oh, senorita. I, <laughs> don't do no I, don't, porn. I, I do not do yeah. porn with you. I clean up after porn, but I do not do porn with you. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what, uh, Spanish is for freaky, but I think it came out of her mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, that's funny. Uh, when I, uh, let's put it this way. When I go out, I just tell, I've written a, f a few books and they're on Amazon. So that's the standard line. Oh, what do you, I'm a writer. Yep. Because when you start getting into, well, I do videos, I do uh, content marketing, I do social media. They're like, huh? It just, younger people, uh, it's, it's easier, to, it's easier conversation. Sure. But with my friends who are, who've had, like I got a friend, he's been in corporate America for like 25 years. Uh, he's a VP. He just doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. I don't even, I don't even bring it up with him anymore. I'm just like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done work. So it's working out. Okay. It's working out. All right. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, what was the big challenge? Like you shut down the gyms, right? Cause I know you were saying your monthly nut was 42 grand. I understand. Yep. Uh, when we had the warehouse, the trucks, the staff, we were burning about twenty-five to thirty. Yep. And that can't, that was whether money was made that month or not. And people don't understand it. Sometimes our, our slow months was June, July, and August. Sometimes January was pretty good because we got a lot of internet bounce. But the summer, summer could have been rough. What was yeah. your big challenge leaving all that? My challenge was emotionally getting over it because. The way that I do things, the way that I am, I never have a plan B. It's all plan A until I get my plan A gets hit by a car. And then there I am sort of left, you know, looking at, okay, what's next? And so I, you know, to be honest with you, it was, it was the worst time of my life that uh, the transition out of the fitness center, um, you know, I was forced to file bankruptcy. I had half a million dollars worth of debt business debt, personal debt, taking money off credit cards to pay my staff. I was driving a beer cart at a golf course on weekends to make $200 so I could put gas in my car and give my, my, my girlfriend some money for groceries. I mean, it was bad. And so, you know, but even while I was sitting there on a golf course, you know, in 37 degree weather, you know, giving beer to these, you know, rich drunk guys, you know, I still knew that I would be successful. There is no doubt. And so I think that for an entrepreneur, the, the big difference is, you know, you just, you just know there's an unwavering belief in yourself that regardless of what gets thrown at you, you'll persevere and there's, there's no plan B. You figure out plan B when you have to. And so it came down to where it was, you know, there was no other option. And uh, so my business partner and I, we decided that was it. And uh, then it was a mad scramble to, to figure out what was next. And so it was uh, emotionally, it was devastating. But as soon as that sort of, and sort of, as soon as I forgave myself for failing in my mind and came to terms with this is sort of, that was my passion. That was the only thing I ever wanted to do in my life. And when that gets taken away from you, and you accept it, <laughs> that was the hardest part in everything that I've ever done. And so, um, but then it was just about getting back on the horse and figuring out another direction and learning from the failures and the experiences that I had that, you know, there were a lot of lessons that I learned throughout that, that period and owning those businesses. And so I've learned a lot and, and I'm faster, nimbler, more, more astute and a better businessman as a result. And today, sitting where I am, if you would have told me, you know, 10 years ago that this is what I would consider success and that I could get up and do videos and make a living at it, I would have punched you in the teeth because to me, the <laughs> only thing that was going to make me happy was having a chain of successful nutrition or uh, fitness centers. And so it's amazing how when opportunities close up, if you keep your eyes open and you work hard, other ones will open that were bigger, better, more amazing than, than the other ones. And so I don't know if I answered your question, you, but I you, told you my story. <laughs> well, no, no, that was actually a beautiful piece because one of the things that I see tripping up people because I, I had a consulting business and I've kind of got away from that because it was really draining, but many people are under this crazy impression that they have to be immediately successful, that mistakes are bad and uh, you know, going to your thing, 
I had five businesses that failed. I didn't have to file bankruptcy because they were all super small. Yeah. And but I lost a lot of money. Uh, the first business was uh, it was a picture with your pooch. I was at uh, Fort McPherson in the barracks as a military, and I put an ad in the AJC and bought this thirteen hundred dollar camera. At the time, I was making nine hundred bucks a month. Yeah. I bought this thirteen hundred dollar camera, had a phone installed in my barracks room, and put that in the paper and just waited, and nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened, and that was just really demoralizing. It was really demoralizing because I didn't understand what I was doing. But as you, you know, going back to your thing and falling off the horse, getting back on those lessons that you learned, because I really think because like I look, I've been watching you for a few years because you're funny as shit because you come up <laughs> in there and you, you've got all of these little movements and you jump in the camera and you do it's like you'll jump. It's like, OK, he's funny as hell. I just <laughs> didn't know you were in Atlanta. How was your first year of YouTube? Oh God, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, looking back, I, I've taken all those videos down because they were so horrible. Um, not to mention they're like 120 pixels. And so the, they were the grainiest things you'd ever want to see. Um, it was it was this like new experience and it was really fun, but it was, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand. I'm not a tech savvy person. Right. I just knew that I had a video and I didn't understand the idea of subscribers. And then all of a sudden people were commenting. I uploaded my first video and somebody asked the question. I'm like, hey, this is cool. I'll do another video. And so it's sort of, you know, before I knew it, I, I had 500 subscribers in, you know, the next year over the course of the first year. And I thought that was just the greatest thing ever. But that's when sort of the light bulb went off. And I realized that there was a bigger audience out there than the consulting that I was doing with working with people one on one. There's a message that people are are interested in that um, is worldwide. And so, you know, my business changed sort of from that point. I started writing more products, creating more virtual services as opposed to doing the one on one consulting. Right. Um, you know, you know how consulting and and when it's you that has to perform the task or the work, it's absolutely not scalable. And so you know, that's what, uh, yeah, the first year was, was a learning experience. How about you? Uh, I'm about to show you some. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the first year I turned down the side. I looked like a runaway slave. I was scared. <laughs> it, it was just, I was so stiff. I was moving. I was speaking in a monotone and I still have most of them up there. But this is where it gets really, really stupid. When uh, let's see, <laughs> see, I played around with all the backgrounds too. <laughs> oh, it gets. There's some the dumb is. I don't like. Uh, I was using something not too much different from a potato to make my first videos. These were made on the MacBook that someone stole. Someone I used to date. It just disappeared when she stopped being in my life. And then I have these videos with these black bars. Yeah, there it is. Because that's standard definition. Because I didn't understand what 720 was. <laughs> yep. Yep. I didn't. I didn't, I really didn't understand what 720 was, and it, it it was just it was it was it's it's I cringe now. <laughs> I, I I do cringe, but I typically leave them up because one of the things that I try to tell people coming to the channel is you're going to make a lot of mistakes, a ton of mistakes. And I can't hide my mistakes and talk about like, well, you you know, it's going to be OK. And so I just leave it up there and people laugh. And but some people still watch those old videos because the retention rate on some of them is amazing. Like uh, it's about 80 percent, but they're shorter because that's when YouTube didn't let you do 30 and 40 minute. Either. Like my videos are extremely long. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an They're hour. <laughs> They're epic. <laughs> well, you know, that's when I, you know, when I first was able to get AdSense, I just figured out if I had more moments for commercials, I could make more money for AdSense. And before they opened up the pool to everybody, it worked out really well. I mean, I had months where I was doing like 2000 in AdSense. Then they opened up the pool and 50% cut down. <laughs> and yeah. then it went lower and lower and lower. But I wasn't like totally upset because I've never made, the majority of my money from YouTube using AdSense. It's never right. been the driver. So when did you start your own product line? How did you, do you make your stuff locally or do you bring yeah. it from? 
so I've done a few different products. Um, like I, I, I started, a, I had a product um, called the Alpha M Style System. That was sort of my first like tangible product where it was a DVD series. Okay. And I actually was on Shark Tank for that. Really? Yeah, season four of Shark Tank. Um, and uh, they hated it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, they hated it. And so um, they hated it, but you know, that was okay because I was like, oh, I'm going to be on Shark Tank. I'm going to sell tons of these. And it was, it was the first stab at me getting into an info product. And so it was a DVD. It wasn't even downloadable. It was a DVD that I would mail out. And so um, I was charging 300 bucks for it. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, was a, it was a solid idea, but the application just wasn't right. And so from that experience and me realizing that, okay, there's got to be something better, I sort of took a look at what was popular on my channel. Okay. And some of my hair videos were what was really popular. So it's like, wait a second, why not, you know, start a, yeah, Pete and Pedro, Bueno Hair. Um, why not start a, uh, a hair product line? Because I wasn't real satisfied with a lot of the grooming products that were out there for men. And so I went to my hairstylist and uh, decided that there were some labs that I interviewed. I tried a bunch of products. We tested and changed things. And and came out with my my line and okay. uh, this was uh, just, back in 2013 all right let's put a pause there what i have a lot of this i have a lot of people in this channel from the storage auction days who hate who absolutely hate the fact that that's like you can make a living without ebay or amazon and this is another reason that i brought you on you went through a lot of uh, reiterations with you know putting together your product mm -hmm. now i don't want your trade secrets because you mm -hmm. got to keep those but do you make your products locally? Do you have yeah. them shipped in? You make them locally? Uh, no, I have them in California. Okay, so they're domestically. They're not, you they know, they're not channel. Okay. Correct. And you control the whole chain from everything. everything. To, now, how, everything. just from the beginning of that concept up to now, how long did it take you to work out most of the kinks? Because if you have a business, there's always kinks. <laughs> there's just there's major kinks and there's minor kinks. Uh, you know it. I started in, in March of 2013. Um, year number one, I made 36,000. Okay. Year two, I made 275. So as you it, it, it grew. And this year, um, you know, I should, I should just in that product sales, I should hit three quarters of a million dollars. And so um, that's good, I would assume. <laughs> I don't know. Fantastic. Yeah, because... I, think it's, I think it's pretty good. It's made and I have it, the lab is in California. Um, basically I, I sourced it a bunch of different labs and, and this was the one that I really loved. And so I have a full line. I've got, um, uh, six styling products, shampoo and conditioner. And, um, I just, I just sell it. I sell it and, uh, I love it. I, you know, sh figuring out the shipping logistics, um, that the fact that there are a lot of, you know, <laughs> dishonest people that steal credit cards <laughs> in some countries is a was another learning curve i lost a lot of money in fraudulent transactions um you know but it's all still a work in progress but yeah, it, it, I'm, it's I'm, incredible I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put a little pause in there again okay you started this in 2013 it's yep. only 2015 mm -hmm. so collectively you're close to you're over the half million mark from a business that you just that's only not even three years old yeah this year i'll hit a million dollars in and in, and in like in total pete and pedro lifetime uh sales so that's pretty cool now see this is this is the wonderful thing like you've went through this journey you've had all of this stuff happen but you never gave up and you're you're proving a lot of points because see i knew you had the site but i didn't know that you're going to be this candid which i really appreciate you because mm -hmm. this is what people want to how, how much money they make how much hey money hey and here's the other thing that's not what I make the majority of my money on. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love the internet. This is why I love the internet. Now, since you went there, what's your other product? What's your uh, other? Well, because um, it's not it, it's 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 video. It's um it's advertising. Um, it's you know the fact that I have I didn't realize what I was doing at the time, but positioning myself as a men's lifestyle. Um, blogger basically um it opens me up to talk about everything everything from clothing uh -huh. to grooming products to cars 
to water, to sports. I mean, you name it. it, you know, if it has to do with men, I can talk about it. And so when your audience grows, yep. Alpha um, um, when your audience grows, it, uh, it attracts a lot of, a lot of companies. They, they want you talking about their products. And so, um, you know, it's a uh, advertising man. They, they will pay for you to use their products, wear their products, talk about their products. The toughest thing at this point is really sticking to my guns and realizing that credibility is king. You know, the minute, the minute I start just talking about anything that somebody will pay me for is the, and the minute I become the home shopping network, I lose all credibility and, you know, and I might as well just go home. And so, you know, turn it, you know, you have to be willing to turn down good money in order to, you know, really preserve your, your, your Intern. reputation. Yeah. Like the wallets, like all of the wallets. Cause when you were doing your 10 business lessons. Yes, like, yeah, exactly. How many stupid wallet, Hey, no offense if you're starting a wallet company, but, <laughs> but slim wallets. Oh my goodness. It's insane. Um, yeah. Slim wallets and sock companies. Everybody's got one. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. And this is what's really funny. When did you really when did your channel really start to grow? Because like you said, you're you're like you you are a blue you're you're a let's call it a handsome blogger. We're not gonna call you a beauty blogger, <laughs> but you've got that's one of the powers that their channels have. They can talk about so much mascara. Hey, hey, let me let me hip you to what's actually happening. All those haul videos that you see where these girls are like, hey, here's my camera. Isn't it cool? Love this. And then check out my mouse. This is the greatest mouse. I got this for from Forever 21. They get paid fifteen dollars to $20,000 per product. They'll string 10 products and make $100,000 in one video. Crazy. I'm, I, I knew that they were getting crazy money for product placement. Uh, Michelle Fan, she she led the she she was the first one, and I know one of them kind of sorta, and I don't know how much money she makes, but I know she bought a Mercedes Benz and she paid cash for it, and she's like twenty nine. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's it's the advertisers, man, because that's the thing. It's um, you know, this is where the demographic of young girls and young men who spend money they're not watching movies they're not watching tv they're online right. they're on youtube and so people want to be the companies and the brands want to be in front of that audience and so they'll uh <laughs> they'll do what they need to do well no i mean that's why i said this thing is just beginning mm -hmm. that's why i said it is just beginning because i hit because my channel's geared totally different than most YouTube channels. It's been geared to make money since day one. So I care more about conversions than views and likes. Mm -hmm. But I've been really pushing. Like This is the first month I hit 300,000 views. And awesome. I got so many join this. Uh, what, I forget what they call Because I ignore them. Uh, network. Join this network. Mm -hmm. Join that network. And they don't understand. And I just told one guy, I said, look, I use my ass this money for advertising. I don't even it's, I don't even look at it as money I get. I look at it as money I use to get more money. That's how sure. I look at it. And your business plan is totally diametrically opposed to what I want to do. And I've gotten so many of them. Now I'm starting to get people who are saying, hey, could we network? Could we partner up in this other stuff? But I've got I sell a lot of my own products. Mm -hmm. a ton of my own stuff and you know you, you when you have your own thing you don't really want to bring anybody else to the party so to speak because i don't even know of what because this one guy he he knows i'm starting a podcast and he wants to sponsor that but he's not offering money that's got my attention let's put it that way but none of this would have happened if it wasn't for that first crappy video yep <laughs> that i downloaded <laughs> and tore up and there's like four videos that were so bad i deleted them but the yeah. rest of them i left up it's uh and and a lot of people are and this is also something that i tell everybody if you have a business it doesn't matter what it is you should really try and and start a youtube channel because right. there's no better way to market and advertise your business 
than, than YouTube. It's the second biggest search engine next to Google, even though it's technically not a search engine, it's, it's classified that way because this is where people go to search. So if you make tires for cars, have a YouTube channel where you're putting up tips to get better gas mileage or what to look for in a good tire. I mean, there you can talk about it. You can, you can become the expert. And if you become the expert, you're going to see your business just explode from the, from places you would have had no idea. I don't understand how businesses used to do business at this point. I'm like, did people actually look for people in phone books at one point? If you needed a locksmith, did you go to your phone book? Yeah, I guess you did. Or it was a referral. Well now, you know, people just go online, hop on, become the expert. <laughs> I mean, no, you, what you say is really true because I look at my own behavior. I, where I live, there's like five targets and maybe 10 square miles. You know where most of my stuff comes from? Amazon. Yep. It comes to the door. Only thing I go to the store and get is food. That's about it. Or maybe a little shopping, but my behaviors are really different than a lot of other people's because this is another thing you probably can understand more than anyone else. When you have incredible control of your time, it seems to freak some people out because they, I mean, let's be honest, some people in retirement don't have this level of freedom. It's just, it does not happen. And I think we're going to a point where, because I actually started another YouTube channel just to do that, because what you said earlier about how I ju just treat your fans with love and that doesn't work. The reason that you're getting so many views is because you're hot, you're 17, and you have your breast up because the girls are looking at you, the guys are looking at you, even the homosexual guys are looking at you for fashion tips. That's what they're looking at. And it's not because you just woke up and started uploading videos. And I think that duplicity misleads a lot of girls who don't have that look because you see girls who are putting up videos, putting up videos, and they're not getting that. And also something else, the, the back channeling that goes on because Smosh, who had 20 million subscribers, yeah. He just, once he started dating this girl, her channel just, I mean, she instantly went to six figures just because she was associated with him. Yep. Nothing special. Nothing. It's just like, oh, she's, she must be. It's like Kim Kardashian has just blessed the whole family. It's like, oh, this one, this one, this one. If you're in the Kardashian family, you're instantly going to get a show. You're instantly going to make money. Yep. And it's not even about talent. It's about position. No, I agree. And that's a big, big thing because now, how many of your friends still look at you crazy because the YouTube channel or now that you're really successful, they're like, ah, or they're still going. Mm. I still don't think most of them understand. <laughs> they go, so, How do you make money? I go, all right. And so I, my, my friends are great. I mean, you know, they, they, um, you know, they, they think it's funny. They think it's cool though. They think it's cool that you can make a living making, you know, making videos. And, and I, happen to think it's really cool too <laughs> so we're on the same page <laughs> i think the thing that people miss is it's not that you just make videos you provide a service well, you, you provide content and you're there's another one of my friends he has this company he started on youtube called asshole consulting he'll be on the show he just makes money answering questions for folks who don't have big brothers and fathers yeah wow that's cool. That is yeah. cool. You're sir, and, and that's the thing. I say making videos, but at the bottom and the root of what I do is I, I help guys feel better about themselves. Everything, all the content that I put out is geared towards helping people feel good and, and confidence. And so, you know, yes, I make videos, but I, I do my best to provide as much value as I possibly can. And so, you know, that's sort of, that's what gets me up in the morning. It's I, I, I love making the content that I do and, and I like interacting and, and, you know, talking and engaging and, and, uh, just being in this, this ecosystem that, that we're in. I just, I love every, every bit of it, man. <laughs> if for someone just starting a YouTube channel, cause you started in 2008, I started mm -hmm. in 2009. It's way different than it used to be. It's way different. What advice would you give someone? Or business. Let's keep it with business. What what advice would you give it to a business to start a channel based on your experience? Just do your get your first video up. Don't worry about perfection. You're never going to be satisfied with 
what you say, how you sound, what you look like, the way you're standing, get it up, film it. Good enough is done. Get the first one out of the way, get it up. Then do your second. Consistency is key. Once a week, you need to be uploading something. I, I believe once a week is, is, um, is sort of like a benchmark. Um, but just getting that first one done and up, that's the hardest one to do. I, I've talked to so many people that are like, well, I'm not really happy. I filmed it 27 times. I'm like, what? I said, you could have 10 videos up. I'm not happy with my videos and I filmed 2,500 of them. And so, you know, it's just, you're, you're always, everybody's a worst critic. Don't worry about it. Nobody notices any of the, uh, the little ticks that you have. You just got to get it up there and, and keep practicing because it's like with anything, the more you do, the more you practice, the more you put up, the better at it you get. And that's it. Now on the tip of business, because you're, the one of the reasons that I watch you is I recognize you were a business person until you put up that I found that video with the 10 business lessons. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how deep that rabbit hole went for someone who's coming brand new to online. What would your advice be for them to start some kind of business? Cause your, your business is rooted in who you are. And that's think I think that's why it works so well for you because all of that stuff you're doing your channel, that's you. That's yeah. just how you live. That's your yeah. thing. Um, what I would say is, you need to open your mind and be curious. That's something that, that I think a lot of people lose. When we're young, what, what do we do? We ask, right? What's that? Why? How come? Who's that? What's that? We ask questions. We're curious about everything. But somewhere along the line, we get conditioned to stop being curious and to do what's expected. With online businesses and the internet, you need to just sort of reinvigorate your curiosity. And if you're curious about something, explore it, see where it goes, see where it leads. How can you monetize that? It's, it's something where you just need to explore the different options that are out there because there are options for making money out there that you had no idea existed. Um, so, you know, just get curious and start doing your research and looking. And the beautiful thing about the internet, it doesn't take a lot of capital in order to start. And it also, because of the size and because you can basically start a business for $5 for a, uh, you know, website template, get a PayPal account, you know, you could be up and running selling something, um, you know, and also capturing your audience, that email list. That's something that I am a late adopter on, you know, getting people's email addresses because if the internet blows up or say YouTube blows up, what do you have? You've got nothing. And so you need to really make sure that you're, you're giving or getting, collecting information from these people as well. Um, but you know, for new people starting, just take a look at what's out there and be willing to adopt if you or not adopt, but, but adapt. If you see something's not working, don't wait six months to try and convince your audience that this is what they want. No, you're, you're nimble, you're quick shift change on a dime you can pivot and try something else and that's the beautiful thing about the internet you don't have to be locked into anything too too you know, too much you can you can shift you can try you can test you can experiment and that's a beautiful thing oh i agree i drive my my people crazy because i've tested out about 50 concepts this year because my failure rate's about 25 it's 25 my success rate is 25 percent so i fail 75 percent of the time so for me to have 100 successes i need to do 400 things and yeah i was wearing my list out people were like what are you doing are you desperate and the thing is i took a chance to move my internet business in a totally different direction because what i think is going to happen Email lists are great and they're more effective than anything else out there in social media. The email list crushes everything. However, I've been doing email lists since 2009 and I've noticed that their effectiveness is not the same. They're still effective and I'm still going to do it, but I'm starting to sell products in video because mm -hmm. whenever someone comes in or they leave a nice comment, I'll engage them and I'm finding out that people are starting to buy much sooner. You know, the whole thing with, you need a funnel. The customer needs to look at seven, you know, relate, interact with you seven, eight, ten times before they buy. I've got people who come to the channel 
and buy that day. The first yeah. day they find the channel, they and I'm finding out that those folks are actually stronger customers because they buy in immediately. Yeah. And the longer I wait to pitch them, the greater chance I have of not selling anything to them. <laughs> so I've been really, really working on that. And that's a whole different thing because one of the things that's fun about talking to you is you have real business experience before the internet. You remember when, you know, everyone thinks it's normal now, and it is normal that your cell phone is your only phone. I remember having home phones. Yeah. I remember having an answering machine. You know, I actually remember having to remember people's phone numbers. I know, I know, <laughs> no, no. That's what's so, oh man, well, I, yeah, like there, there are two phone numbers that I know from heart, actually, yeah, three. My own, my wife's, and my grandmother's, that's it. And the grandmother's just because I've been dialing it for 39 years. <laughs> right, 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 right. It, it's just, it's really interesting what's happening in this space because I think one of the reasons that a lot of businesses don't come online is because of the confusing information that comes from the younger, younger demographic, which some of them are brilliant. I'm not going to marginalize them, but a lot of them just really lucked up into it. And the early adapters, I finally figured that out because it would drove me. I was like, how did, how did this work? You, you hear this kid? Yeah, I got 10,000 subscribers this week. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And then I finally figured it out. 2006, 2007, 2008. Facebook wasn't what it is today, but MySpace was the monster. So yeah. these kids who were upperly mobile, because that was another thing, everyone didn't have a camera. All these phones yeah. were, you know, camera phones, that wasn't like that. So they would come on YouTube, then they will filter their video through MySpace. And mm -hmm. it would blow up because there wasn't all of this distraction because, you know, you already know this. Your video is competing with PlayStation, Disney, the phone, Angry Birds, Facebook, Twitter, Vine, all of that stuff is competing with you because they all want that person's attention. Absolutely. And that is the big thing. And that's why I've been working on more content marketing. And see, that's the thing. What you do for your products, and it's just naturally embedded, which is so crazy, is content marketing. Yep. Just talk about what you use. Because I'm not going to lie. Every time you jump on something or you jump in the camera, I crack the fuck up. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> it's like, boom. You know, I was like, okay. It was like, he's having fun. Oh, I and, like, and that's the thing. And that, you know, it's funny, though, because I, I've taken a lot of my videos down. But part of it was trying to figure out, like, in the beginning stages of my YouTube channel, I was trying to figure out who I was and what my message was. And so I looked at all these other successful YouTubers and I saw that they were being real racy or they were cursing or they were just being over the top, you know, whatever. And so I did that for a little bit, trying to thinking, okay, well, I've got to be a jerk in a certain way, or I've got to say something that's off color. And what I realized is that what people really reward is authenticity now. And that's what they're looking for. In, in the world that we live in with all this, you know, the superficial nature of everything, if you're just real with somebody and tell them, you know, and let them see who you are, it's, I mean, that's, that's what people are really looking forward or looking for. And so I took all those videos down because I was embarrassed of myself. So, well, I was getting ready to say, you know, that's just not you. Cause I get the feeling yeah. that you are truly one of those folks who's a gentleman and not a guy's pretend to be that to get women when that's not really who they are no oh, that and, whole space of the pickup artist is a whole nother story conversation for another day <laughs> well i mean you got many people because I, and there's something else you might want to do on your channel you can do a you take a google doc and turn it into a feedback form and put it mm -hmm. in one of your channel icons of one of your links on your uh, channel page yeah. i ask my crowd like you know because i use a lot of profanity because that's just who i am yeah and you know for some people, they don't like it. And I yeah. say, that's fine, because there's someone on YouTube for you that will give you what you want, which is cool. Then I asked my people that they like it, and I was really surprised, because it's like, I don't care. And one yeah. person said, I'm leaving the channel if you stop cussing. Yeah. <laughs> that's who I and, am. And, mine, and, and I'm not talking about the language. I'm talking about just the topics that I would cover and some of the things that I would say. I just, just was not... It, it, it just cool for you. It, it, it wasn't. Yeah, it just wasn't good anymore. It it just it just wasn't worth it. Well, I, I mean, I totally get that because my big struggle was I write dirty books, erotica. Well, I was writing quite a few. I have a few under a pen name. I write under the name of a chick, and they were doing pretty well. 
And then there's so many things I could do that I was confusing people. So I started focusing strictly on business and I started to see great returns because I did the same thing that you did. I looked at a bunch of YouTubers and the ones I saw that were really, really successful, they had one singular topic and everything else spun around that. Mm -hmm. You being one of those handsome bloggers is you could talk about so many things, but it all intersects with grooming, yeah. style, confidence. So it's not an atypical thing to have on your channel. Whereas I'm doing business. So like the story I put this morning about uh, Marissa Mayer, who's the CEO of Yahoo. She's pregnant and she's going to take two weeks of maternity leave. and all these feminist organizations and the national organization, they're losing their mind. And I put my take out there because it fits business yeah. because, you know, yeah. I have it, my channel used to be like 90 some percent male, not so uh, 80 percent male, 20 percent female. And it's like, look, the reality is if you're the CEO of a company, you're not a normal woman. You can't ha have that normal woman's life. And the reason she's only taken two weeks is Yahoo's has been in trouble for years. Sure. There's a lot of things wrong with Yahoo. So she can't just go off for three or four months when the ship is already sinking. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, this is what's funny about her. She doesn't have to work. When she was one of the first Google employees, she's worth 300 million. She works yeah. because she wants to. Yep. And I give her a lot of credit and props for that. But it comes back to one of the reasons I got you on the channel and other business owners. Many people have this facade of business ownership that you get to do whatever you want. Like now I can. But in the beginning years, oh, my God, I was a slave to my business. Yeah. 100 percent slave to my business. I mean, I was it. Well, I look back and that's one of the reasons that I talk about these subjects unvarnished and just give people the truth. You can now build a business. That I couldn't be, that I couldn't have built ten years ago. Sure. And my whole thing now is I preach create your life first, and then the business that fits into your life. Don't build a business and then try to fit your life in that business because it won't it won't work. And mm -hmm. that's the reason you have so many things that go wrong in the personal relationships with the friends and other things. Now that I'm past uh, this new thing, because I'm most amazed at how well it worked, but. You know, just having people like yourself who have went from physical business to personal tragedy to now you got a product in the company that's going to do seven figures in less than three years, which is pretty strong, which is really, really, really strong. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm, um, <clears throat> I'm just so happy that I get to do this every day. And, uh, you know, hopefully it continues and hopefully I'm smart enough to know when it's time to hang up my hat and do something else. But I think that my business will continue to evolve. Um, I stopped making five year plans. I just hope that, uh, next year this time I'm having as much fun as I am now. And I still don't have to worry too much about money. That's it. Everything that sort of happens in the meantime. And, and as a result is sort of just, <laughs> just, just bonus. So, all right, that is really, really cool. I want to say thanks for coming in, giving us your time, and just helping Absolutely. out this crowd here about business because a lot of people just have misconceptions. And what I wanted to do, and you know, like once again, thanks, oh, is bring Thank real you. people who have real businesses who are not what I call the stratosphere of the Google, you know, of Zuckerberg, of all this stuff. Because the thing is, you can start a simple business and have an amazing life. So with that, I want to just say thanks. Appreciate you having on the, having you on the show. Hopefully, Thank you so much. Uh, if if not, yeah, if you don't mind, at some point in the future, we probably want to bring you back to just see what's going on with your company because I have yeah. a feeling you're going to be doing something else too. In a very I have a feeling future. I will be too. But but <laughs> since you're in Georgia and you're like ten minutes from me, we might as well do a video together. Cool. Done. All right. Done. Done. All right. Done. Done. So with that, I'm going to shut this down. Brendan, thank you so much. Thank you. For those of you who make it to the end of the video, I've got a deal for you. It's called a bundle. Essentially, until September 30th, you get everything that's on the site plus everything that's coming. Just click the link, make it happen. And remember, after September 30th, this goes away forever.